it's time once again for us to go through all your lovely comments through the Meeple Gallery and try to answer some of your questions. Jonathan, you have prepared the list of the perfect comments for us to go and talk about. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I only choose the most perfect ones. So if you're on this list, you're perfect. Uh, that's right, we've got a few subjects to talk about. Maybe this won't be the longest viewer comments we've ever done, but that's okay. We're tired. We've been mm -hmm. doing a lot lately. We had a 24-hour stream. <laughs> yes, that's right. If you're one of the people who watched us play games for 24 hours last weekend, we appreciate that. There's still time to donate. We technically responded to all the comments during the stream. Yes, there's a lot of chat comments while that happened. Uh, Thank you again, but we're going to talk about from the past month or so some other comments. Starting off with what people thought about one of the biggest games of the year, Tapestry. Our review for it went up very recently. Uh, Jason Tupek said, Pleasantly surprised by the relative positivity in this review. So many others out there hate it because it's, quote, not a Civ game, it's too swingy, and or there's too much luck in it. I think it's very strategic, and the rewards come with the understanding that is gathered through more and more plays. Of course, it's not for everyone, but it's a great game that is a lot of fun to play. I mean, there's a bit of luck in the dice, so I guess the science track can really turn things around, but considering that's just one out of four... Right. I, I suppose there's luck also in uh, which cards you happen to draw. That is true. We did mention. We did mention. We talked that about that. That yeah. was an issue. But um, but I mean, I, yeah, I feel like that's not as much of. Um Every game has a little bit of luck. I, you know, not I, every game, but the ones we like. <laughs> not every game, uh, but in general, you know, if you if you're looking for the most hardcore of hardcore Euro strictly strategic game, they're out there for you. Uh, but yeah, I think we, you know we were pretty fair. We're I, I'm, it surprises me to hear that I guess a lot of people weren't even compared to ours, which I thought was relatively mild for what how big of a game it is uh, that uh, some people weren't a fan of it, but. Say la vie, different opinions. Speaking of which, uh, Mel Wegman hmm, disagrees, says, if it were not a Stonemeyer game, it would be very forgettable. Not to mention the $100 price tag. That is a fair point. I mean, we, we brought that up also, I think, with the Power Rangers game. That $100 is a really a tag. Once you hit that, you it's, it's, it's going to make me think about it a little bit more. Yeah, that box is, it's a big box. It does have some nice looking components in it. But the problem is, are they really needed for the, like... Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's arguable. I think there's a, we could have a whole discussion about production value in games and when is it helpful, when well, is it not. I'm th strictly thinking, like, the miniatures. They are the monuments, but they're also not, like, the pyramid or something. Do they really need to stand up on the board as much? I don't know. That's yeah. up to you to decide, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I can definitely see a benefit for it, but, you know, when you're on a budget... It can, it can still hurt the overall game. Uh, Zabu-san uh, said, I agree with a lot of what you said, and yet I still really like playing the game. <laughs> I guess he agreed with our yeah, negative no. points. Hold on. <laughs> I, have, I have yet to win against the level one Atama in solo, but I am very much enjoying trying. I think if you're a person who has an issue with randomness, you will have an issue with the game. I personally love the challenge of getting something randomly and then figuring out how to best maximize it, even if it is not ideal. One thing I have been doing in recent plays is to change all tapestry card draws into a draw two choose one. I think this makes people feel a little better. Even if both cards end up not being ideal, the illusion of choice is powerful. What do you think about that variant? Well, that's really good because even if it's an illusion of choice, you're still... Because by the time you hit your first card tapestry, usually you've drawn at least... You've drawn two cards maybe, maybe three... And if you think about it, if you did that, choose to, that means you've seen six cards. So that really does help mitigate the, like the bad luck you had, yeah. I think, in your first game. I mean, it literally doubles the opportunities you have. Like, sure, you could still get bad, but you feel a lot better if you're seeing six versus maybe one or two. I do also kind of feel like, I mean, the tapestries can make a huge impact on your game, but it's, you, you're playing between three and four, I think, depending on your it, faction. Yeah, no, it, it, it's not the end-all, be-all, but it definitely game, feels a whole lot better if something, like, isn't against what you want to yeah. do. Well, I guess the traps also make, because those can come out of there, so that does make a big difference, too, if you have a trap or not. Um, okay, so people, that's it's interesting. It's, you know, people were definitely not as uh, effusive about Tapestry as, say, Wingspan. Uh, this I year. definitely enjoy Wingspan more, but I also like birds because they're dinosaurs. So. <laughs> if this were just birds, that'd be way more points. That's a, they just need to make, Stonemaier. 
only bird related things. This is all about building your bird empires, uh, built, making making wine from birds. Uh, everything has to be birds. I love a good bird wine. Um, <laughs> hmm, this is aged sparrow. Okay, <laughs> sorry, stupid. Next up, uh, another giant game. We're gonna keep the train rolling. Marvel Champions. We put our review of that very recently. Big LCG release from Fantasy Flight, and I think there are some interesting comments about it. Uh, so Hoser Forty K said, "I jumped ship from Arkham." LCG to Marvel Champions. Unfortunately, I ordered my copy alongside a game mat, and they won't send my game until the game come game mm, mat comes in. I've heard yeah, some people say that. Uh, uh, he also asked, "But what now becomes of Jonathan's legendary collection? <laughs> it's still still growing, still growing, still going." <laughs> now, before you say anything, I want to because there's a couple. There's another one right along these lines that I want to touch on. Uh, Yogi B Bear said, "I am deep, deep into Arkham LCG, so sadly, I'm a pass on this one." Uh, I'm up to date with current campaign cycle, have deluxified almost everything, playmat, storage. I have a feeling where this is going to go. Everything, send help. And then Adil Garasu replied to that. I thought this was a good back and forth. Uh, said, Arkham is a much bigger involved beast. I love it, but it's very different from Marvel. Uh, there's less required. Arkham's main draw is the story, which Marvel doesn't have. Marvel's about spending as much as possible to feel powerful, while Arkham has you being conservative and holding out on timing. Marvel is less demanding. Uh, for, for Arkham, I can only truly appreciate the Carcosa cycle if I bought all the boxes for it. With Marvel, you could just buy a Doctor Strange pack and just use them to face the same villains. Uh, overall complexity and deck building, more limited in Marvel. Says, I I still prefer Arkham games outside of IP comparisons, but in a few years' time, I can see that changing. Now, my question to you, based on all of this, is: What do you do? You feel, and we can use these as a specific example, that for most people, is it does it make sense to do you have to pick an LCG and that's your LCG, or do you think it's possible to live in multiple worlds and keep up with all of them? I mean, hypothetically, I think it's possible to do that, but that's more of an income thing. First, sure, yes. <laughs> That's definitely a big part of it. In this case, mm -hmm. I've played multiple, and they're very true. Arkham's definitely more of like, if you like campaigns to go through. While I think, and Lord of the Rings is almost in the middle of this, because mm -hmm. it still has a sort of campaign, but the deck doesn't upgrade and change really. We just have the one deck, and we maybe upgrade when a new pack comes out for just cards, mm -hmm. which is exactly what I think Marvel is. Now, my suggestion is that you choose the Arkham Horror one. Now, the reasoning behind this isn't because I think it's a better pick. It's because the best way to do this is to have a friend and suggest they buy that one because they can make the decks and that way you play with their copy. And you're more likely to convince someone to buy a Marvel game, I think, than a Lovecraft game. <laughs> yeah, that's if you have someone else, that's definitely a solution. Make them because do it. Because <laughs> I have Arkham, Jonathan has Marvel, our friend has Lord of the Rings. Our friend it's, has all of them, probably. All the rest, yes, but really Lord of the Rings 1 is the big one he likes the most. So yeah. that's like the perfect ideal fit. That way you just build decks for everyone and you just that way you have to worry about that. If they want to build their own deck, that's perfectly fine. You have the set. But, you know, sometimes, I know, especially for me and you, it's like, I can only focus on how one game works. If it's you build enough. the deck for me, that's great. <laughs> I do think that what Adil was saying uh, rings true, that I think you could use Marvel as a side game, but only if you probably aren't as committed to really keeping up with it to the same extent you do something like Arkham. But if you are if you just want to have it and be like, yeah, once in a while, pick up a pack, I think it's, you could do that. You with, absolutely could. With Arkham, it's harder. For both, in particular, you know, if you really are stretched on time in this uh, equation, you know, look online. People suggest like Arkham Horror, the, the subreddit has so many great things. I've just recently seen a list of like best solo play, uh, best, best people for solo play for each campaign. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Marvel will have the same thing. It's, you don't have to do everything on your own. There are great communities. I know for Arkham, and I'm sure for Marvel, there will be great communities that build up and help you out there. Yeah. Now, if you if you start getting into the competitive LCGs, then that's a whole other ball game. Oh no, then I can't help you now. there. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I just thought this was cool. A couple of games we had. You know, we always talk about weekly releases every week, and uh, one that came out a few weeks back was Circadian's First Light, which is a new sci-fi game from Renegade Game Studios, mm -hmm. and I think it was a Kickstarter as well. Some people already had their hands on it. And a couple people, uh, Kit Strong said, Circadians is shaping up to be my, one of my favorite games of 2019. I've played it three times since receiving my Kickstarter copy. Look forward to many more plays. And Seamus McGowan said, 
ordered Circadian's First Light as my Essen pick, great theme and wonderful worker placement mechanics, also ordered the Kickstarter expansion from Garpill Games to make sure I've got the same as the Kickstarter backers. Uh, his other pick from Essen was Clip Cut Parks, mm. worth noting. Uh, but I saw a bunch of positive comments in general about Circadian's First Light, which wasn't really fully on my radar. So that's, that's cool to see what different people are looking at because there are so many games that, <laughs> that come out all the time. Now here's a question, uh, we'll get into a bunch more random topics right now, that you, I believe you answered already, but I thought for posterity's sake we'd include it in our comments section, because we interviewed uh, Jamie Jolly from Shadowborn Games about Oathsworn, which, is that, did that campaign finish at this point? Or maybe it's probably got a few days left to go, but uh, it, it's, it's been, I I've think lost it's track. Track. over. <laughs> I think it's probably wrapped up by now. Uh, we're promo cards in it, by the way, mm-hmm. <laughs> if you didn't see, which is kind of awesome. Uh, and uh, it, there was a whole thing where we wanted to ask what your favorite uh, character to play oh, as Oh, yeah, was. I answered this in the comments section. Hadn't been revealed yet, but uh, so I, I didn't actually read your answer, so what was your answer? Is that a pen, and he's sort of the Templar Penance. paladin kind of deal. And so he's sort of tank, but also heals and stuff. More, but I thought he was cool. I love the way his design worked. Uh, he, and he was the first one I played, and I still think I enjoyed him a lot. Not this, anything against the others, it's just... I liked his design. Yeah, yeah. So uh, cool stuff. Definitely some cool characters to go to. Uh, and thank you to Toby O'Hara from Shadowborn Games for commenting on that. If you didn't mm-hmm. see our interview, uh, some interesting stuff there. A deep dive there for you. Uh, Falcon Ash K has something to say about the game Growl, which we reviewed. All right. And Falcon Ash K, as we learned, is the, the Growl's number one super fan because he uh, donated uh, to the Extra Life charity during our stream in to get us to play Growl, which we did on camera. Hey, it works for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he elaborates on why he loves it. Says, uh, we play it more than one night Ultimate Werewolf. My game group somehow can't get it, though. <laughs> uh, I think they focus on the werewolf games, and this uh. is a 180 turn from them. You see everyone at the table and not closing your eyes, save for the sniff rule. That's only for uh, eight or more players. Right. Uh, when they have to growl, it's more like a meow, a small whimper, or they say growl with a sigh. <laughs> I don't know why. I played it at my last Extra Life, and we played one round, and they gave up on the game. Um, we'll play that later in my group as gamers speak for not going to play that again. <laughs> when one of the players died, that player scoffed when he died. The games are so quick, you just play another round. That player's not out forever. I love my Howly Growly box, too. I got the extra metal coins, <laughs> an extra deck to carry with me. This is interesting. He got an extra basic deck so that he could play the game with up to 15 players Ooh, by combining uh, them. That's pretty cool. Uh, which is some creative thinking that I guess would work yeah, pretty we, well. Yeah, we, we didn't growl that hard either. No. <laughs> we, uh, I'm not a growler. We, I mean, I try, but you know, you gotta. If the whole group isn't enthusiastic about it, it's hard to be this, the lone growler. <laughs> but yeah, this is. If you missed us playing it in our review, this is a social deduction game that, I, for me, has quickly become one of my favorites of the pack, just because it's so quick and easy, and you can well, just keep playing. It also it. has a lot of modules too, which I think adds a lot of fun. Yeah, right? every time you. Play, I really wish we got to mix them in. We didn't do the we undead should, one that well. We tried the undead expansion, <laughs> which is if someone dies, they become a zombie. No one dies. No. <laughs> we tried. <laughs> yeah, so that was a, that was disappointing for sure. But I love that idea of buying multiple copies of a game and being to get able more, to play, play more yeah. players. Yeah, I think Smash Up also has like that. Um, Did we talk about uh, uh, just Tiny Towns? Technically, Tiny has Towns that. has that. It's yeah. really nice because well, well, not only that. Let's say it's not you don't have to buy two. What you could do is you could have one set. I have one set. And that way, if I'm not with you, I can play with my small group. If we're together and we have like a big party, then we can combine them. Mm-hmm. It sort of works out really well that that way you don't have to feel guilty buying your own copy. Yeah. I think Growl also is nice because it relies also a lot on just your two neighbors and there's no downtime really because, you know, it's just passing so quickly. So mm-hmm. unlike some games where at increasing the doubling the player count could be terrifying would just ruin the game <laughs> uh, that game doesn't have that problem uh, we were talking about the brand new Zombicide second edition which launched on Kickstarter mm-hmm. I think we were a little confused about we were you know you were asked is this did they say anything about the Tubaru or Tebaru te- 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 whatever yes. it's called their new digital format and uh, Sean Bayless said uh, come on it's supposed to be launching the he says the Tuvalu or whatever along 
along with Zombicide Vegas. Does he actually say the Tuvalu or whatever? Yes, he does. <laughs> uh, Zombicide Vegas sometime next year. Uh, as well, Jay Aitken said, Zombicide has exclusives, which I wasn't sure about. I believe the digital version is a totally different game that will require pieces designed for it. So yeah, I believe that is the case. The Zombicide, this mm-hmm. Vegas thing, it's a totally separate thing for that. That better have like Platform. a whole section of where you can use like slot machines and stuff. That's has an app. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be pretty good. Uh, maybe a zombie comes up. I don't know. So uh, interesting how they're really dividing those mm-hmm. that market. Which, but I guess it makes sense because. You don't you don't want to alienate the people who don't want to buy into that, right? In a sense, um, we also now speaking of not wanting to alienate people in big digital titles. Uh, one of the Kickstarter picks we had was Beyond Humanity Colonies. Right, we've talked about this in a few different videos. Another really big Kickstarter game, very app driven. Oh yeah. Heavily so, based on technology, and I think I said if you're not, if you're someone who doesn't like technology and games, stay away from this one. Uh, well, uh, Jean Christophe Capo said, "Hi guys, I have to disagree with you on this one. I am really not enthusiastic when it comes to app integration and electronics and board games for too many reasons to list here. But regarding Beyond Humanity Colonies, I'm fully blown away." First, the game really feels immersive and everything on the technical side seems to help that feeling. Second, the app is not taking too much place, very little interaction is required, and nearly everything is managed through the cards and buildings with RFID. Last, everything which is managed by the central building, the ARC, seems to be impossible to manage just through normal rules. The citizens votes, their moods, more uh, events, outbreaks, etc. will be much more simplistic if determined through a rule book, and I believe this will create a very deep Euro game as never seen before. For me, that's the first game where the integration of apps and electronics is not just a shiny gadget, but where it has been thought to improve gaming experience, gameplay depth, and possibilities. The expectations are really very high. <laughs> no, he's really, uh, that's a really, really good very point. Right. Uh, I mean, a lot of those numbers, I don't even know how you'd do that without an app. You know, like calculating how, what people remember, what way you voted, uh, your population numbers, and things like that. It definitely makes sure that the app is is of course piece of it. Yeah, I mean, are there cuz you know, we've like a lot of games that use apps. Are there of of the most of the games that we play that we like with apps, do you feel like they could be replicated with a rule set? I mean, technically Mansions did beforehand. Right, that's um, true. I mean, where words you could Same just have a sense. pull from a deck of cards with words on it and then have a timer or something. Definitely. Um something like I'm trying what, to think of other ones with I mean, apps. something like XCOM? Yeah, XCOM. I guess you could that one would be a little bit harder because it like how do you know how many to spawn in stuff? I'm thinking um, about um, a game that is not an app game, but I feel like really is the precursor to app games, and that's Arkham Spa- Space Alert. <laughs> yeah, that should be an app. Uh, Space Alert, which is you just use the CD at the time, right. audio files. I'm, if that game came out, I'm actually shocked. How have they not made a new edition of that that uses an app? It seems like right there on the table for them. But um, th- that also came with a set of cards, and if you wanted, one person could just read the cards at certain intervals, and you have a timer, uh, which we never tried, because that just seems worse. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like, in general, a lot of the app games I like, I think, to some extent, do require the app. We uh, also talked about a new release that came out a little while ago, Horrified. In fact, I think you might have seen us recommending it in our uh, gift guide, which mm-hmm. came out just a day or two ago. Uh, Rico Cordova says, I don't like negativity, so normally I'd keep this to myself, but you asked about Halloween games. I played Horrified a few days ago, and it was awful. We, um, we have plans to play Abomination on Halloween Eve, and I expect that'll be much better. Didn't go into great detail as to what he didn't like about it, but I know Rico is a real heavy Euro game guy, and I suspect <laughs> Horrified is very much uh, more Ameri- of a casual Ameritrash uh, I'm, randomness I affair. definitely want to play Abomination that was the Plat Hat game. I was really hoping because when we split off, you hit Plat Hat. I think while I hit Metal Gear, right at, at our convention. I was like, yeah. I was really hoping you'd tell me more about that. Yeah, I didn't get the chance to hit it. it, it I mean, they had like four huge games. They that did. Year. <laughs> they, they, it was uh, crazy. Plat Hat came in strong. I've heard decent things about Abomination too. So yeah, uh, something that hopefully we'll get a chance to play. 
Get back to us on that, Rico Yeah, You, you said you're going to. <laughs> Did you do it? Did you play Abomination? Yeah, let us know how it went. Um, another thing we talked about, there was a new uh, Versus release. We've mm-hmm. actually seen a few Versus releases uh, over the past few months. The cinematic-based ones. Yeah, they use the uh, photographs from the movies, and we weren't sure, the because we're not Versus players, uh, are these like reprints, mm-hmm. or they, do Versus fans like them? Uh, Josh Hunter said, regarding Versus system, these expansions are brand new cards, getting added to the game with different effects than their illustrated counterparts. There are good reasons to pick these up since the expansions contain new main and supporting characters. And while Upper Deck can't use the LCG subtitle, that's what Versus 2 CPG is, uh, you just buy the one box and you have max copies in every box, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a designed divide where you can include photographic cards and illustrated cards in the same deck. But it was, to my understanding, intended to give new players a jumping on point since as an LCG it's been around for a few years and the card pool is pretty deep if you're brand new to the whole thing. Also gives the designers room to explore some concepts that are already already large illustrated card pool is otherwise restricting. So that's yeah, interesting. It's good to hear that they didn't make the mistake with uh, Legendary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they didn't just reprint cards with the worst art on them. But I... I well, the yeah. same cards, too. Yes, the literally the same cards. <laughs> <laughs> what? I think we have... Two villain groups and a boss <laughs> that yeah. are actually new. Yeah, like that. I think that's the only thing that survived into your legendary collection. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, so what do you think about uh, that? Like, oh, we, 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 let's make a new set that you can't combine with the old one. That's really weird because it's sort of like it's like, it sounds like exactly the kind of thing I would like and you wouldn't like. <laughs> yeah, more or less. Yeah, it's exactly it. <laughs> because like I, I'm fine with it, like Captain America can't be Captain America because you can't have two Captain Americas. Mm. But I like. Being able to mix everything with everything. But I do think there comes a point where, if for a new player, it is it is a nice jumping on point where how do you, like they're probably losing sales because if you say to someone, yeah, come play, there's 9,000 cards. Well, that's why you have you like start? something like Modern in Magic or Pioneer that just came out. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could say. Well, you don't think this is kind of, kind of their version of that a little bit? Well, then there should also be, I don't know. It didn't go into detail. If there was a rule set, like, yeah, there's also this version where you can mix everything. Like, I enjoy Commander, which is technically the entire pool. Theoretically, you could do whatever you want, right? right? (laughs) You could mix them however you want. I don't. No one's gonna, a guy's not gonna knock on your door and (laughs) take your game away from you. Oh, no, 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 no. (laughs) There is a person in Magic who goes out the doors, and if you do anything wrong, he will come and find you. Yeah, but I don't know. I think it's, and also I think thematically, it's personally, I wouldn't really. Uh, but I'm more interested in the thematic stuff. Like, kind of the same reason I don't love playing. Like, when we played with the Spider-Man Homecoming Legendary set, I don't really want to mix the illustrations with the live action. Because to me, I I like it being consistent. I like seeing it all thematically fit together. Uh, but that has nothing to do with the actual mechanics. That's my own just thematic preference. I'm fine with that, mostly because, like, especially with superheroes, where there's so many alternate dimensions. Like, I expect <laughs> dimensions to look weird and different. Yeah, you could certainly argue, argue that point. Um, we've got some other games to talk about. I just need to read this to remember what game that they're talking about is. <laughs> um, that, oh, yeah, we reviewed Ecos. The mm-hmm. new game from AEG and uh, John D. Clare, uh, and maybe we're a little bit, a uh, little bit uh, not super enthusiastic about it. Matt H. Louder said this game is a bit better and more fun than the pros and cons list suggests here. I recognize mileage may vary, but I hope people know different gamers and reviewers like different things from of randomness. Course. Uh, the game emulates life evolution. That's thematic to me. Uh, this seemed like a totally fair review, but pretty lukewarm. Uh, and no, you're yeah. absolutely right. You know. We're only two guys, and (laughs) I do actually think we're, for the most part, pretty similar with our likes and dislikes. I mean, we have a couple things, like, always with card games, we're going to bring that joke up, as you said said earlier. We almost always tend to agree on almost everything in the board game world. (laughs) There's, like, just a couple issues. I think in this case, I I liked Ecos a little more than you did. I think I I wasn't as bothered by some of that randomness. No, that that is true. And I can see where you're coming from for years, but for me, like... I enjoyed like Darwin's choice more in that aspect when you literally have different creature parts getting thrown on there. Um, mm. I guess for me, it did not it spark well, but you always should. I mean, not just with board game reviews, everything. Check out multiple sources, you know. Yeah. We are just one of many, and <laughs> by seeing all of them, you'll really get a feeling if this game is for you or for not. not. 
Yeah, and I think you get that idea too from watching it. Like, if we say, oh, this game is too much randomness, if you know you're the kind of person who doesn't mind randomness, right. then you Almost just ignore that. By <laughs> knowing what we don't like, if you like it, you're like, if they yeah. didn't like it, that's great. Right, no, that's really, that's what's important. You gotta find a reviewer that, you just need to know what's consistent about your views and what's not, and then you know what the, when to agree or disagree with them. Uh, now I wanna bring it back to uh, Oathsworn, which we were talking about later. The Thelonious Mage, Thelonious Mage, uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't a fan of what he saw. It said, Oathsworn's gameplay looks underdeveloped and repetitive. They utilize an action system similar to Conan's, but it looks way more restrictive, defeating the flow of that kind of system. The non-combat city exploration phase interests me more, but still doesn't bring it to a $99 value in my opinion. However, the world looks incredible, and I'm intrigued by what promises to be good writing, but I'd much rather just dive into a tabletop RPG. For $99, this seems lacking. However, the minis are looking looking outstanding. There seems to be a decent amount of value. Uh, Still, I worry I would get bored with the boss fights and just be playing to slog through the game and justify my purchase. Uh, Sounds like a lot of things that remind me of kind of how we felt a little bit about glue. I was about, I was was (laughs) going to say that. I was like, that was my exact argument. Uh, Yeah, and and I, I get that. I will say in this case, I think uh, what appealed to us more about Oathsworn is that they, the stories I I well, think is I richer. Still, I love the combat mechanic with the dice versus cards. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And it definitely is a game that's a bit restrictive with the actions, but I liked it because the way you were going around, all right, if I do this, you had to think, you could sort of like, it felt really good when you were able to cheat system somehow. Like you were able to switch cooldowns and all of a sudden you got this weird combo going off. It wasn't often though. So it really did feel rewarding when you got it going. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's cert- if you didn't like, uh, I mean, he didn't bring up Gloomhaven, but I, I, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're an RPG player, then Any probably of these games, none of these right. really, like an RPG is always going to fit your needs better, <laughs> I think. But if you're, not, if you're not someone who wants to design those worlds or you just don't want to spend the time I'm reading the books and stuff. Games like this are a really nice solution for groups like that. Uh, so I think there's there's value in having them. Um, Falcon Ash K uh, came back again to talk about the Wendy's RPG, <laughs> uh, which if you recall, they did publish. Speaking of RPGs, he said, I too downloaded the Wendy's RPG. It has some amazing artwork. And yes, you can be a, a red, bra- you can get a red braided wig for your heroes. These sample characters seem like real pl- playable characters in D&D with odd quirks to them. I could walk to my local Wendy's 0.4 miles. I might get a few friends and take a booth to play it there. <laughs> Please do. I, I, in the comment, I love he says you can't get rid of wigs as if like no other RPG could do that before. Well, I think, you know, that's the number one. That's the deal breaker. If you couldn't do that, that in Wendy's, then I'm not I'm not playing that not, RPG. You, not the, the white and blue uh, dress? That's well, not the important? Hmm. Uh, yeah, both are pretty important, <laughs> I guess. Uh, in- interesting to point that out. Uh, the Ernie Fours uh, also interested, says, that's all I need. I'm selling my Gloomhaven and the rest of my board games. I just need Wendy's okay. D&D. I was like, uh, is this still on Wendy's or is this going back to... Frozen <laughs> Hamburger Meat is no joke and needs to be defeated. By the way, Wendy's, if you want to pay us to promote you, we will. Oh, <laughs> I have you, no problem with oh, that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> love, I love Wendy's. <laughs> um, uh, one small correction from, this is actually from our last... Uh, comments, comments video. It's been a while. Uh, refresh, Damon. Uh, we had talked about Star Wars X Wing in the new second edition. Someone was complaining about having to rebuy all the new ships. Mm-hmm. They said uh, Fantasy Flight Games actually did release and have since reprinted conversion kits for your first edition models, so you don't need to rebuy models to play second edition. As a player, I don't really consider it a cash grab, but a way to fix a game that was getting increasingly broken. Although going second edition did seem to mortally wound the game in terms of attendance where I played. So that's interesting. So I wonder if there's just such a strong perception of it being a cash grab that it died off and people weren't willing to change. I mean, it's one of those, anytime there's a second, no, I guess not second, a new edition would be the better words here. There's always the confusion then like, can I not buy this? Is this product dead in the water? Do I need to get the new one? What's different? Is there a conversion kit? Do I, is there pointless to get a conversion kit? Uh, well, it stink because I'm missing out. Like I know, for example, Descent actually, while well, you have the second edition, I know there's first edition stuff. Mm-hmm. Like they made a conversion kit. But to my knowledge, not all of it has been brought over. Right, right. It's a, it's a hard thing. At some point, you got to draw a line in, a, in the sand and say, 
well, we're gonna, you know, you're gonna alienate some people. You're gonna block some people off from the stuff that they liked, and some people will be disappointed. And mm-hmm. <laughs> but sometimes I think it's also just necessary when a game becomes dated, or maybe not. Sometimes maybe it is a cash grab, and it's just it's not selling as well, and they want to put a new coat of paint on it. I don't know. It depends on the game. Finally, I just want to address uh, uh, multiple people uh, pointed out my uh, haphazard dressing capabilities <laughs> on a few videos from a couple weeks ago. Uh, and it wasn't Kevy B. It, was, uh, it wasn't Kevy B. Not at first. Not at initially. He, he jumped on the bandwagon. Uh, I had a button-down shirt which was buttoned unevenly, resulting in one of the pockets being lower <laughs> than the other. Truly, I did not notice even after editing that video uh, until it was pointed out to me. Uh, uh, so, you know, I take full responsibility, but also I think it, it could look kind of cool. I kind of like it. Yes, this is the, uh, I guess the few times we don't have a Kevy B section. That's because he posts a lot in the Discord, and uh, we respond directly there. Good plug. You can be on that Discord by supporting us on Patreon. For simply $1, you can join in there, and you can argue with Kevy B as well, or argue with us. Yeah, there are, there's some, we have some fun and interesting conversations about board games, of course, but all kinds of other stuff in that Discord channel. Uh, how much you love, uh, what's that alien's name? Alf. Alf, thank you. We got a lot of good Alf content in the Discord. So yeah, check out our Patreon uh, and you know, suggest to us more things. Leave more comments down below because we want to keep reading mm-hmm. them. Again, we want to thank everybody for watching. And if you tuned into our live stream, thank you. We raised a lot of money and you can still raise money for children's hospitals. Uh, but we'll put a link in the description. It'll be up there for a couple more months. Uh, or you can donate to like anyone's campaign. Mm-hmm. You know, it helps. Uh, and we're really grateful for people who did that. Also, if you didn't see um, on Board Game Geek, we actually also took part in this uh, auction with uh, that Jamie Stegmeyer puts together every year, where uh, he auctions up some different things. This year it was exclusive uh, Wingspan games, and the money raised from that goes to charity. Uh, and we were lucky enough; he asked us to take part in it. Uh, we uh, had our, made ours the uh, St. Jude's Children's Hospital, mm-hmm. and uh, I think our for our specific thing, someone bid six hundred and fifty dollars. Went, Thank you so much. Went straight into to that charity and got it. They got a cool copy of Wingspan that in return. So really cool. It's, Thank it's you nice. so much for all your donations. Holiday season. You way know? to be great gamers. <laughs> yeah, way, way to keep it co-op. <laughs> way to be. There's there's a slogan. Uh, thanks guys for joining us. We'll have more stuff to come as we continue to recover from our 24 <laughs> hours of gaming. Uh, keep keep love flowing. And if it's not love, then block it up. <laughs> Another slogan. I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. This has been. The Meeple Gallery. Get an inspiration token by supporting us on Patreon and liking and subscribing to this channel. If you support us on Patreon, you'll get access to our audio expansion podcast. It's so good. 